Would you like to see some of the cool items I picked up at the Kentucky Anna Show this past weekend? Well, stick around. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. This is Paul Knapp coming to you once again from the Man Cave, and I have just returned from the 10th annual Kentucky Anna G.I. Joe and Toy Show in Louisville, Kentucky. And man, was it a great time, and I can't wait to show you guys some of the things I picked up. So let's get to it. Before I show off my treasures from this past weekend, I'd just like to give a big shout out to all the vendors that were there. There had to have been over 40 to 50 vendors at least. This is just a few of them that I picked up their business cards from. Uh, obviously ones we buy from and people you've heard of. Uh, some of the other ones I didn't pick up. Uh, Cotchwool Collectibles were there. Um, obviously Pawtucket's Toys, Mr. Vintage Toys and Trains. Um, gosh, who else was there? Masquatch Customs was there. G.I. Joe Rescue, uh, Scott Wild. Met him, he's gonna be on the, a future show. The Wolfman Collectible Collection. I also ran into Sergeant Van from Sergeant Van's Customs, uh, Fantasy and Customs. He was there. I believe uh, Scott Wild was at his table. I was talking to him. I got some video of that. Uh, Be Active Toys, uh, Brad Curry was there. He's been on the show before. Of course, I said Paul Tucker Platoon. Uh, Marauder Toys was there. So it was just amazing. Uh, not so much just all the vendors that were there, but the people. I mean, everybody was so nice. Um, Steve and the guys there, they, they put on such a great show. Uh, Steve Stovall, uh, congratulations again. I think it turned out great. And uh, again, this was my first one that I've been to, but I definitely, uh, definitely signed up to be back there again next year. So thanks again to everybody that was involved. And let me show you the treasures that I came back with. Now, if you saw my earlier video on the South Louisville um, Antique and Toy Mall, You'll notice I stopped there and I picked up some stuff, but I never showed what I picked up. So this is what I picked up before I even got to the Kentuckiana show. Um, these items I couldn't pass up. I haven't seen this howitzer in a very long time. Of course, it was sort of sold, I believe, at Toys R Us back in the day. This is the green version, the, the uh, olive drab version, not the gray one from the Korean War. So I picked this up and uh, it was at a great price. I think it was... Uh, Actually, Steve Stovall's uh, spot at this antique toy mall. I also picked up this guy here. Now, the figure is vintage, but the outfit is not. So, um, but I did get it at a good price and I had never seen the uh, Canadian Mounted Police. And then I picked up this vintage figure here. He was in great condition, all of his gear. Uh, so I ended up getting a uh, vintage Navy sailor with the uh, blue helmet a little bit harder to find but uh, so that started off my weekend and uh, Now I'll show you what I picked up at the show. So let me first explain how I attacked the show this weekend I was there for about three three and a half hours and for the first I would say two two and a half hours I just went around to every vendor and tried to get video for everybody to see who all was there and then I put my camera down for the second uh, hour or two and uh, went back in and just started buying things. And these were two of the very first things that I purchased. Uh, this is obviously the backpack from Fight for Survival. I needed a vintage one of those and I picked one up. And these are the red lights for the uh, shark attack, the adventure team, um, Revenge of the Spy Shark, I think it is. And uh, I needed a set of those, so I picked those up. Uh, I believe I got these both from the same vendor. So those were the first two things that I picked up at the show. So this year's theme was Invasion of Spy Island, and several of the vendors had items to go along with that theme. Brad Curry made a giant diorama as soon as you walked in, and it had everything on it, so you'll be seeing that in the video. But this was one of the first items I came across. It was at Mr. Ashby's table, and it was his contribution to Invasion of Spy Island this year. And I will open this up and show you, but the box art is awesome. And Scott Ferguson and I were talking for a while at his table, and I this was the first purchase I made, and I said, let's do this. Okay, now here's what you get in the set from Invasion of Spy Island Underwater Infiltration. You get a 
new wetsuit. Now this is not a reissue, this is a brand new wetsuit, very reminiscent of the 1960s wetsuit. Uh, it looks white here because it does have a powder on it, both inside and outside. And you can just wipe that off. Uh, he does give instructions on how to take care of that. So uh, you get the three-piece wetsuit. You get two different size uh, fins, uh, larger one and smaller one, depending upon what G.I. Joe you want to put in there. If it has smaller feet, I guess, or the larger feet. Um, you have this 3D printed, I believe, kind of a jet propulsion. And I'm not quite sure, but I believe this jet propulsion, underwater propulsion system might have been met, made by that gentleman on the bottom. We'll have to ask him some night on my live stream show, but that might be the top secret 3D printed item he was referring to last week. You do get a uh, kind of an underwater uh, weapon of sorts. You get the rebreather. Uh, goggles and snorkel. So the only thing not here is a GI Joe. So you go to Cotswold Collectibles and you get yourself a GI Joe, whichever one you want, you stick them in it. Lastly, another 3D printed item, and I'm not sure if this is Jim Eggner's or somebody else, but this is really cool. Um, comes with the chain. You'll hold it to the bottom, and this is two pieces right here that opens up, but you could easily glue that together if you like and it comes with a little stand so very cool very cool and this was my first purchase at the Kentuckyana show so after I spent some time with Mr. Ferguson and Mr. Ashby I went over to Brad Curry's table and I asked him uh, I was looking at all his new 3d printed stuff and I said what did you make for the show and he showed me this piece now this is the top of the tower for Spy Island and he said it goes with another piece that Steve Stovall was selling with his set. So you basically had to buy both sets to have the complete tower. So I purchased this piece first. Um, and again, it is really cool 3D printed item. It does, if I can do this, this will turn if need be. And these are all individuals. These all turn as well. But you'll take this and you'll put it on top of the tower. I'm going to show you that next. But this piece was from Brad Curry. I'm not sure if he's selling these on his Etsy store or not, or on eBay, but uh, very nice piece to add to your collection. So then I went over to Steve Stovall's table. His uh, link is My Vintage Toys and Trains, and he made this set, Spy Island Invasion Sabotage piece. Now, this one did come with a figure, and it did come with two outfits for the bad guys, but as you can see here, this set also includes a lot of different stuff. And I'll take that all out and show you individually. And the ra radar tower, the bottom part of it, is in this box. And this is a very large uh, playset box. So first I'm going to show you the tower itself. This came in, I guess, three or four different pieces, depending upon if you bought the set from Brad Curry came with the bottom part of the tower. It came with one of these gray pieces which you put on top of the tower. And then you would take this piece here that came with this set and you would put it on top here. Now mine does not fit in there. Um, it won't, no matter what direction, it is too big. And Brad Curry had mentioned something about that saying that the measurements were off on some of these and that's why he made this piece uh, a second one. But I tried both pieces and it doesn't fit in either one. So I'm not sure if I got one of the defected ones or the measurements were a little bit off, but I think Brad Curry needs to redo this piece or his piece because this piece doesn't fit in either one either. Um, it's exactly the same size as a smaller black piece. It doesn't fit inside that, nor does it fit inside this one. So uh, I'm not sure how they're going to rectify that, If uh, or maybe I just got one of the the first versions and I didn't get the change but um, yeah I will contact them and find out what they're doing to uh, remedy that um, it did come with decals uh, I guess for the bottom portion of this so very nice piece just uh, wish it fit all together um, this giant radar piece did come with the box set so again with the box set you've got 
these two pieces here and the decals and the top portion of this radar dish and it is a much larger radar dish than uh, some of the smaller sets that the adventure team came with so now the figure that you received now mine is a painted hair blonde looks like the super joe white elephant uh, reissue it is a 12 inch figure it does have the kung fu grip hands not sure if it's a cotswool collectible body but uh, it is the head the painted head from the uh, white elephant toys now the uniform you get for your adventure team figure you get the uh, hooded jacket cargo pants gas mask the short black boots shoulder holster for the 45 pistol knuckle knife that's in black some TNT with a timer on it a grappling hook which is neat you also get a flare gun and a walkie-talkie along with your dog tag so complete uniform to go on whatever GI Joe you want if you want choose to use a different one or you can use the one that came with the, uh, the set and to round out this set you received two complete sets of what they're calling a guard uniform which is the jacket the cargo pants the shielded helmet a set of jack boots the white utility belt and an m16 uh, assault rifle so you have two sets of those uh, but again no figures so let me show you what i did so my final purchases for the day were these two cot swirl collectible bodies of course i went to his table mr greg brown and uh, picked out two bodies with two new heads and these are going to be the two figures that get the uh, bad guy guard outfits so stay tuned for a future video on my version of spy island invasion sabotage now i have one more item to show you which i did not purchase at the antique mall or at the show this past weekend and you're gonna love it and here it is the 1976 Barbie Star Traveler this thing is huge it is 36 inches long and this is gonna be my next project my next conversion like I did my last two conversions I found this at an antique store just on the border of West Virginia and Virginia and I will post a photo of that store but this was the best purchase of the weekend this baby only cost me 40 bucks and hopefully in the next couple weeks I'll get some ideas from my followers on what to make of this but I'm thinking adventure team uh, cryptid vehicle of some sort maybe uh, somebody mentioned a, a moon uh, vehicle a lunar moon vehicle but I had never seen one of these up close I've only seen them uh, on video or uh, in in a uh, antique store that was way too much a guy had a complete one of this for $84 and this one was not complete and needed a lot of work and I told him how about 40 bucks and he said sure so again stay tuned for a future episode of refurbishing and designing something new for my adventure team. But until then, as always, keep on collecting.